Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler here, and I am here to talk about part four of a current series, the Curator Functional Demo, and I want to talk about dashboarding and reporting. Okay, so what I have up in front of me, and we're going to start the way we have in the last couple of videos, and we're going to start in the old style interface, and we're going to work our way to the kind of newer features and tools, right? But I want to start back at the beginning, and then we'll work our way into all of the other things. What I have here, it is just log activity, and I have gone through and I've said exclude some data that's the sim talking to itself and did a high level categories and I just made something up quick and easy that looks like it might be a good report, right? So we have a couple of options here. Number one is the really particularly easy one that I can say actions, um, export to CSV, print, export to XML. If I print this, it is gonna go through and I have mine in ultra wide mode so it looks a little funny. If I wanna report out of QRadar, I can go through dynamically and say, oh man, this is a cool thing. I want to show this to my boss. And it will generate this report just by printing to PDF, right? And that gives you everything in a pretty thing, including all of the graphics. But maybe you don't, you're not looking for pretty, you're looking for a lot of usable data. I export this to CSV, full columns, right? Oh, excuse me, can't do a full column to this particular report because everything's visible. It is going to, and you will notice it is doing this in the background. Okay, I'm going to say notify, oh, it beat me, notify when done, it creates this CSV file with all of the raw data in it. Sorry, that one opened up on the twin screen, but this shows you what's going on, and it's all of the things we have in there in case you want to parse this data in another system or you want to just kind of go through it in Excel because that's your tool. Okay, so I'm just going to blow that away. So just from your log activity or your network activity screen, you can go through and just make those instant snapshot report. Okay, so something else I can do is I can save the criteria, right? Let's say this is a report I might want to run a lot. I'm going to hit save criteria, and I saved this one earlier while I was setting up for this meeting, and it's going to say, okay, MW high level categories. Those are my initials, so I can find it later. I can put it in a group if I want other people to be able to find it, and it's going to show, you know, all of these things, including do I want it in my default dashboard, right? Do I want to include it in my dashboard? We're going to look back at that in a bit, but at the moment we're just saving criteria, okay? I can share this with everyone or include it in the quick searches. I'm going to throw this in the quick searches just so it's easy to find. So I'm just going to OK out of here. It's going to tell me that it found it. So now if I look at my quick searches, you're going to see that I've saved this here and I can duplicate this dashboard or this report anytime I feel like it. Okay, but we're going to go over to the actual category called reports. And you're going to see that I have 138 loaded, right? Which is not a ton of reports. So I have opened up my uh, X-Force Exchange Hub. I've told it QRadar. I've told it reports, of which there are 24 report packs at the time of this recording. And these are additional reports you can add to your QRadar. And there's uh, some good ones here. Some of them are just QRadar improving its own function. Some of which are, like this one, are about better FortiGate reports. So let's crack into this one. This adds 16 custom FortiGate reports, 33 saved searches. And you remember, I told you a search can always be made into a, rep a uh, report or a dashboard. Okay. And these are some of the searches. You'll see they're marked for FortiGate, talk blocked applications, all that good stuff. You can add as many of these as you want to your heart's content, or you can make your own. Um, we're going to go through a kind of a quick and dirty exercise here about making a report. So I'm going to start out by telling this I want to go into actions and I want to create a report. And this is kind of reminders and those are fine. Um, and I want this to be only manually, right? But I could have this to schedule to go by itself because if my boss wants a weekly report, it'll just do it by itself. Um, and this is the layouts of it. And we're going to do kind of a simple report. So it's going to be kind of one thing in the middle of a screen. Okay, all well and done. But we could break it up as far as well as we'd like. And this is where we get into kind of the meat of it. And I'm going to call this Winkler 1, and I'm going to tell this events and logs, and then I'm going to hit, let's see, tar title. I'm going to call it Winkler 1, and I'm going to give this a time frame. So this is going to go, and this is based on a date range, right? I could say start date, end date, all of this, as well as we can change these to our heart's content, but this is a report for a snapshot in time. Okay, so I can go through, and I know what I called that search, what we did in the other screen. MW high level categories. I'm going to, okay, so that's good. I'm going to save those container details. And then there's a question of what do I want it to look like? 
Um, a bar with five is probably not going to be enough. I want a bar with, um, oh, let's call it 30. Okay, high level categories. I want it to be vertical. Um, and I'm just going to save these details, right? So we've just created a pretty serious quick and dirty report. I can change the graphic up here. If you want it to be other than an IBM Q radar logo, you can do that, okay? So I'm going to go through, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, it's a preview screen. Artist conception. I like PDFs. Some people like HTMLs. So you may want raw data, right? All up to you. And I'm going to tell this report to the console, but it might be that I want to email this to users. And those are all of my... Um, my users who are in QRadar. And I'm going to tell, you know what? I want to be available to everybody. And if I want, I can add this to a category. And I'm going to say this is usage monitoring, just to pick something so it's easier to find, right? And I'm OK. Let's go. And I now have a report called Winkler 1. And I'm just going to search for that quickly. And here's my report. And if I want to generate this, I have to tell it actions, run report. Okay, and it just gave me the message. It may take it a couple of minutes. If it's a particularly big report, um, this one is a manual. It shows that it's generating. And as it is not a particularly big report, you'll see that this has appeared over here in the right-hand column. Okay, and this is the, um, the log data we were just looking at earlier. What are the high-level categories and how are they happening? It's mostly authentication on and on. And this is this kind of old-style report, but it'll run by itself without you having to update it um, as much as you want, right? Because so we took a search, we made a report. All well and good. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my log activity. And I'm going to go into search, edit search. And I'm going to type in MW high level categories. Ours is the one with the capital C, by the way. As you can tell, I've run this demo a couple of times. And I'm going to hit this show AQL, OK? What this is, is this is the code um, that there's places later it's going to say, oh, can you write that in AQL? I am far too lazy to ever write AQL code. So I'm going to copy that to clipboard. Okay, and from here, we're going to get into some of kind of the newer look and feel stuff. And I'm going to go over to my Pulse dashboards. Okay, so keep in mind that I copied that because we're going to use it later. Pulse dashboard is an awful lot of things that are pre-built for you. This is an offense overview. It says, shows what's going on and what we're working on, right? 116 offenses, four of them are high level. And okay, it's good stuff. Um, and I can look at a whole bunch of these things that are built into uh, Pulse a lot of applications are making their own Pulse dashboards now, and I've made one that was kind of uh, fun to look at here for you. But if I want to create new dashboard items, right? If I want to create these reports for myself, I can always go through. And there is a bunch of these that are written by default and you need to do nothing. Oh, default IDs, disk metrics, you just tell it what it is. Uh, EPS uh, hitting license, I wrote that one myself. Number of events per user audit authentication failures. I just click on this, right? Save it. And it is going to appear on this dashboard. In this case, my number of audit authentication failures is two, so that's kind of a boring graphic, but it's a nice um, execution of the principle. But in this case, I want to create a new dashboard and I want it to be blank. And I'm going to call it uh, Winkler Data say at the moment I'm not going to choose widgets for it right so what do I want to do well I want to create a new widget okay and okay we're calling this to stick with our theme and I'm taking um, I'm naming this after the query we did earlier right for a query I'm going to tell this that it's AQL because we've just captured the AQL for that I'm um, going to dump that statement in there. It's a straight cut and paste. It's not terribly exciting. And it went through and it ran the query, right? It shows you what's going on. So, okay, I've now built this Pulse query. Um, this is the data, and it's the data I'm looking for. And because of the kind of data this is, I've made it a tabular display. Okay, so I'm going to save that. So now if I go through and I'm like, I want to find my Winkler 1 table. Okay, that's great. And I want to click on that until I see that little check mark. Okay, so now that I'm going to click that out, I have my Winkler 1 table. And I can stretch this out so it fits the big pile of data I've asked for. 
And this is all the data we were looking at in the other place. So if you want to do in kind of a pulse style graphic, and I know this was kind of a quick and dirty of it, anything you save as a search, I can make into an old style report or a new style pulse graphic. Okay, if we actually go through some of these uh, new interface options, right? So I'm gonna go into the try the new UI button and you will notice that inside here, there is a pulse option. So I can go through and all of these things that I've been looking at in the other side of the interface, these are not terribly different from this point of view, right? You'll notice there's Winkler data and there's our Winkler data. There's the report we created, right? So this is kind of that new look and feel and we can do that by capturing AQL. It is likely the, um, do it from the search name and don't need to capture the AQL feature is coming in the near future. But that's one of those things that we can do. Okay, so we have moved over to the X-Force Exchange, right? And I want to show you the last piece of a kind of a dashboarding and reporting is there's a lot of pre-built dashboards. You will notice I've selected Curator up here and dashboards down here. And these are all dashboards, some made by IBM, some by third-party companies to extend the functionality of it, right? So I can have a, a McAfee Curator connector or Forescout or some of these that are built by IBM. And they're really pretty simple to add through the App Assistant, right? Which we'll get into in, uh, in detail a bit later. But if I go through, and this is my Curator, and I have told it that I wanted to add Thread Intelligence. I can make them visible or invisible with the star, right? This is one of the uh, the Curator created ones, and it's actually pretty cool that we can go through and scan for uh, verified phishing URLs, of which there's 20,000 in the collection, right? All I did was add this dashboard. The rest is just done. It does everything else by itself, which is particularly cool, right? This is one of the apps that you can get inside the App Store. But if we want to look at some of these others, right? I believe I have a Juniper one up here. And I don't have a lot of fun Juniper data in this. But this is an example of a dashboard from a third-party company that we can add to Curator, and it just kind of does everything by itself, right? So we have an awful lot of dashboarding and reporting options both old style and new style, depending on what you want to accomplish. So guys, I am Mike Winkler, and this has been part four of five of the Curator Functional Demo, recorded in early 2021, and thank you for your time.